Uh, the way it started is I wanted to write a book, and the title of the book was going to be I'm Kind of a Big Deal. I never ended up doing it because I didn't have time, but the topic of the book was personal branding and how a lot of times people are successful because of who they know and not necessarily how smart they are. So the purpose of the book was supposed to be called I'm Kind of a Big Deal to say, hey, I'm not the big deal you're the kind of a big deal. If you go out there and you network and you get to know more people, you'll build up your brand, more people will get to know you, and you'll actually do better in the corporate world. I went through a lot of failures. Uh, my biggest one, my first one failed, which was a job board like Monster.com. Failed terribly. Mm -hmm. Didn't lose too much money but because I didn't have a lot. My second failure was a web hosting company and I lost a million dollars of borrowed money. Wow. Uh, I had quite a few failures along the path. Um, you know, you live, learn from those experiences, mistakes, and if you don't repeat them and you keep on moving forward, you're more likely to succeed as you continue along, right? Yep. The purpose of KISS Metrics was, it was to solve our own problems, which is why we started, created it. We had another analyst company called Crazy Egg, and we had an issue tracking stuff. Google Analytics would show us page views, visitor accounts, stuff like that, but wouldn't track like the lifetime value of a customer, your churn, your true conversion rates. They didn't have flexible funnels. They weren't tracking cohorts. They weren't tracking marketing attribution. Right? Like there's so many things. That's just six of them that I listed off. And we wanted all of those customer metrics because those customer metrics could help us actually fine-tune the business and improve our revenue metrics. because we were like hey if we have this problem maybe a lot of other people you know ha have this problem as well and we found out really quickly that many other people have that problem as well a typical day tends to be I spend half my time on email or one-third of my time on email responding to people. A lot of my workflow is in my email inbox as well. The rest of my time is spent working. So strategy on the company, uh, working on the marketing for Kissmetrics, uh, you know, just helping manage the team or the marketing team and just making sure things are cranking or numbers are going up and to the right. If they're not, then there's a problem, right? Uh, right now, I'm spending a lot of my time rewriting copy, marketing copy specifically for Kissmetrics uh, for the sales team so they can use when they're doing their sales calls. But uh, I do a bit of everything, right? I do some legal stuff here and there that probably takes up 30 minutes to hour of my day every day, uh, especially for the next few months. But my days spread apart quite a bit. And I do blogging every once in a while. I typically blog every Sunday night because I publish on Monday and every Wednesday night because I publish on Thursday as well. Groupon is very metrics driven, right? They do everything based off the numbers, fine tuning it, lifetime value, so forth and so on. One of my favorite companies that's actually metrics driven that no one really talks about is Amazon. They test every little thing that you can imagine out there from button colors to different shades of buttons to placements to copy to dotted lines around boxes. Amazon gets so much user feedback from people and iterations, right? Like it's nonstop. They look at quantitative, the data part and qualitative, which is like feedback from people like actual voices. So they're combining those two elements and then iterating and making changes to the website. game actually, right? There's enough people in India, population's huge. Not everyone's gonna adapt, right? Because not everyone has, you know, laptops, stuff like that. But yep. you can get a small user base and then grow it from there. And the trick is is how can you grow within your market first, meaning the Indian market. Because it's very time consuming and expensive to create a business that's outside your region. If you can't first tackle the customer base in your region, it's going to be much more difficult for you to tackle the customer base outside. Example would be US or Europe or Africa or South America, whatever it may be, right? So it's like you want to first target your market in India, your local audience, get a core customer base and then expand from there. And yes, it's going to be hard as you know, you have to get a lot of the early adopters, 
but there's enough people in India from what I've seen where you can build a big business. And just businesses, right? Because there's not enough time in the day to just do one business. So, but more than just focusing on one business, more so focus your business on one aspect. It could be solving one simple problem. It could be going after one customer base. Whatever it may be, have a really fine-tuned focus. Once you notice that your growth is flattening over the years, then you can consider expanding, but first you need to focus on that one core customer base solving that one problem. The core mistakes I've made is I've in, got involved and invested in ideas, both financially and time commitment, and not necessarily thinking about the people. The hosting company that lost me a million dollars, it was a good idea. It was a grid-based environment where you combine a lot of the servers, so that way you know, you're know you not having a dedicated server with X amount of customers. Instead, you're having 100, 1,000 dedicated servers combined and then you're just putting as many customers on all of those servers together. The problem, and that's what Media Temple ended up releasing like six months to a year later. The problem with that model was I had bad people in that business. So you need to have really good people and focus on making sure you have a team that is there for you, is smart, can adapt really quickly, because if you have bad people with you, the businesses are going to succeed. The mistake that I've made is execution had great ideas, had great team, but we're slow to execute. As entrepreneurs, you should really consider following the minimal viable product approach, lean startup, Eric Reese, right? Because if you can follow that, you're going to be much more agile at developing, you'll get things out quicker, you'll learn faster from your customers, you can pivot quicker, all those kind of things, which will mean that you'll be more likely to succeed and find that product that reaches product market fit.